Hey, welcome back to today's episode of Commission Ed. We are excited to have you here. And today we are going to talk about what Air Force officers do. Reed, you're in the Air Force, right? I am in the Air Force. Does that mean that you're a pilot? No, I'm not what? a pilot. I'm not a pilot. Come on, man, you're in the Air Force. Everybody in the Air Force is a pilot, I thought. That is a common misconception. In fact, only 4% of the Air Force are pilots. Only 4%, okay. What is everybody else doing in the Air Force? We got 96% of the Air Force that doesn't fly. Come on, help me out here. Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about what is it that Air Force officers do? And it's quite a wide range of options. Um, myself, I'm an intelligence officer. Colin, what is your specific trade? Yeah, I'm a civil engineer. But you're also changing to be space operations. That's right. That's a pretty big shift. How are we gonna explain all this, Colin? Well, I think the best way to do this is first understand how is the Air Force structured as a whole, the differences between officer and enlisted, and then we can go from there to describe how officer career fields are set up. Perfect. So to begin with, active duty, there are about 330,000 airmen that make up the United States Air Force. It's a whole lot of people. Uh, about 15% of them make up the enlist, make up the officer corps, and the remaining 85% are enlisted airmen. And the enlisted airmen are those who are generally responsible for the, the primary execution of the mission. However, that does look a little bit different for some of the officer career fields, especially pilots, who are the ones who are in the cockpit, flying the stick, and dropping the bombs, right? Exactly. For the officers, their primary responsibility is leadership, to lead those enlisted professionals. So each of us have a trade, and the Air Force categorizes those trades using something called an Air Force Specialty Code, or AFSC. You're gonna hear that a lot. Yeah, an AFSC is a designation for your responsibility within the Air Force. We already mentioned a couple of them. Reed, you're an intelligence officer. I'm a civil engineer, cross-training into space operations. But let's describe as a whole, how are the Air Force specialty codes for officers set up? Exactly, because once you understand the method to the madness on how those little codes work, it can, it can help you understand where you fit in to the mission of the Air Force. So each AFSC is composed for officers. We'll start with officers. We'll, we'll describe officer AFSCs. For officer AFSCs, they're composed of two numbers followed by one letter those designators describe who you are. So an intelligence officer is a 14N. So one for November. Call yep. it. And the same is true for civil engineers. Three to Echo, 32E is a civil engineer. So these codes are really key to help you understand how you fit into the bigger scheme of things. I start with a one, Colin, you start with a three. What are these codes and what do they mean? Yeah, so the best way to understand this is there are nine primary areas uh, of AFSCs. Anytime you hear an AFSC, the first number, one through nine, is going to tell you which category they fall into. One is operations, two, logistics and maintenance, three, support, four, medical, five, professional, six, acquisitions, seven, OSI, special investigations, Eight is a special duty identifier, and then nine is other cats and dogs that uh, that don't fit anywhere else. Exactly. And once you have that primary designator, then you have your subfield, if you will. So one, operations, four, intelligence, that's a 14N, that's how I work. Yeah, civil engineer starts with the three, combat support, then the two designates a civil engineer and then the letter at the end is just another way to help us understand where you fit within that, uh, within that category. Exactly. Now, we're not gonna go into our enlisted AFSCs, but they follow a very similar structure. And the bottom line that you need to understand is the closer you are to one, the closer you are to the operational mission of the United States Air Force. That's right. So the perfect example here is a 1-1-X, which is all the pilot Air Force specialty codes. Because it's a one, one followed by a letter, could be a, a B for bomber, F for fighter, M for mobility or cargo. That tells you someone who is an 11X is a pilot in the Air Force. And something we need to mention here at the outset, this is in no way to describe or to 
give these sort of career fields a ranking, right? Everybody is important. Everyone plays a specific critical role to the entire operational mechanism. It's just a way that we're categorized and it helps you understand where you fall in the scheme of things. Yeah, in fact, you are going to hear over the course of your career and also in this podcast that you are an officer first and your career field second. Let's talk a little bit about what that might mean. Yeah, so it's a really interesting thing to think about. We talked about in other videos how for the first decade of your career, you're gonna be really focused on learning your trade, but that's not your reason for being. Your reason for being is to help lead people to accomplish the mission. And if you understand that dynamic and can make that balance appropriate, uh, you're gonna be more effective at both being a technician and being a leader. That's right. And the idea of being an officer is that you are not primarily responsible for the execution of the mission, but enabling others to, to execute the mission. And that includes working with other AFSCs, other areas of the Air Force, in order to accomplish that mission. Operations doesn't do everything. They can't be successful without support. Support in operations can't be successful without without other elements such as medical or acquisitions. We gotta have healthy people, we gotta have our stuff. And so it's the all of the different career fields coming together as a whole, which is how we are going to actually accomplish the mission. Something that we should also talk about, Colin, is how we're unique in our profession in that we need to be able to operate completely isolated and alone. We can't rely entirely on other infrastructure to be able to support us in what we do. Well, what does that mean? That means essentially we're our own little world in and of ourselves. If I need something built, I can't go to a local construction company. That's what I got Colin and his buddies for in, in civil engineering. If I need some comm support, well, I'm not gonna call up my local ISP. I'm gonna call comm on base and they're gonna bring professionals to make that happen. That's just due to the nature of our profession. We have to have that ability to rely on each other. And that just shows the inter how intertwined we are and how necessary each and every career field is. Right, and then as we have those responsibilities given to us, as we have a mission that is defined that we are supposed to carry out as this very small and, and close-knit group, there is going to be one commander who is ultimately responsible for all of it. And that commander is always going to be an officer, right Reed? Exactly, and that's I think one of the most important things for all of us to keep in mind. With becoming an officer in the Air Force, comes the responsibility and the potential for command. And being able to have the knowledge and education in order to do that, that's a lot of growth and learning that has to happen. Absolutely. Command doesn't happen for all officers uh, right off the bat. It takes a long time to develop the competence, the character, and the connection necessary to, to carry successfully the burden of command. And so there are a lot of other things that we do as officers along the way as we develop to the point where we're able to become that commander. And we wanted to close this uh, discussion today sharing a few of the different things that we have done over the course of our career. Yeah, because in order to have that knowledge, in order to have that education and training, and, and frankly the life skills, in order to command and to command a large multinational force to accomplish the mission, Colin, I've been required to do some crazy stuff, right? I've briefed four-star generals, I have been in the Situation Room at the White House. I have emptied garbage cans. I have cleaned up vomit. I have driven people in four-wheel uh, four drive vehicles. Uh, I've trained students. I've done briefings. I mean, the list goes on and on of the wide variety of things that have been required of me, but that have given me knowledge and experience. Yeah. My career has been every bit as varied and exciting and mundane as yours, Reed. Absolutely. I have written a lot of bullets. I've also shot a few bullets, right? Yeah. I've seen things go boom, and that's been really exciting. I've also seen people's lives implode. I've done my best to keep the crap from hitting the fan. I've also tried really hard to keep actual crap from flowing in the streets. We love our CE guys. <laughs> that's right. I have sent people to deploy. I have also sent people home from deployment. I, I have dived into actual dumpsters to pull out information so it didn't get into the hands of the enemy. I have been there to keep airmen from, uh, from taking their own life because the enemy was wearing the same uniform as them. My 
time in the Air Force has been incredibly varied and challenging and exciting and really frustrating. It has run the complete gamut of all the emotions that are possible within the human experience. Yeah, times a thousand, Colin, totally agree. Uh, you brought up that we that you've deployed a few times, I've also deployed a few times and brought the fight to the enemy. There is blood on my hands. And that's something I have to be at peace with. We've talked about how important it is to know yourself. Well, you're also gonna have to know everybody around you, the brother and sister to your right and your left. And the depth and breadth of human emotion that we're gonna experience in doing that is something, Colin, I certainly wasn't prepared for at the beginning. We're really hoping that by sharing this information with you, by you engaging with us, by you liking, sharing, and subscribing, we can all grow together and have this journey where we can learn and be better airmen. Yeah, we want to hear from you. Our experience is our own, but they're not the uh, they're, they're not the experience of every officer that's in the Air Force. We want to know what your experience has been. We want to know what are the things that you are most excited about if you haven't if you're not yet serving. We want to hear from you so that uh, we can uh, provide additional information and an understanding about what is required of, a, of an Air Force officer and what do we do on, on a day-to-day -day basis and over the course of a career. That will be all today. Links in the description below for all the information we shared today. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks for joining us on Commission Ed.